going to show you how to set up an air shock on an e-bike. So there's a few different kinds. This air shock has two different valves on it. We'll look at that one. And then some of them just have one air valve and a lockout. And then if you're thinking of putting an air shock on your e-bike, some e-bikes, there's really not a lot of room to get at the air valve. So we're going to talk about that as well because these shocks really were built for bikes where there's always a lot of room to get at the air valve on a bike. So that's never a problem on an actual bike. A lot of e-bikes come with just a spring and then it's not really a, even a shock absorber. You can see there's no damping and it's just a heavy spring and it rides terrible. So there's definitely reason to want to upgrade to an air shock. So first you're gonna need a shock pump and you're gonna need to get to the air valve. You can see on this bike, the air valve is obstructed by this support. Um, with this one, the workaround is I can sit on the bike and then it moves the shock down so that I can get a pump on it. You will need a shock pump. Uh, you can get them fairly cheap on eBay or I'll put a link where you can get one in the description as well. But a lot of shock pumps have a straight nozzle like this and that's a problem with e-bikes. So in my case, I'm gonna use this adapter to get 90 degrees around the corner when I'm pumping up my bike. If you don't already have a shock pump, I'll put a link in the description to one that has a 90 degree end on it. That's a lot better for getting around the corners on an e-bike where it's kind of a tight fit. So the air valve will have a cap on it that you need to remove. And then you screw your air pump onto it and then you'll use the pump to pump it up and you'll need to experiment with the pressure. You probably want to check the manufacturer's recommendations, but there is a rule of thumb regarding sag. So shock comes with this little band on it. That's what you use to set the sag. The sag is how far it sinks down when you're sitting on the bike with your full body weight. So you set that after you've pumped it up and then you sit on the bike. And in the case of this manufacturer, they recommend 15 to 25% of the full travel of the shock worth of sag is the optimum level. So if I sit on it and then get up, you can see about a centimeter of travel. And I've already determined that that works well for me. So that much travel, which is about a centimeter, works perfectly for this shock on this bike. It, it glides along. Some of them have a chart on the shock that tells you your body weight and how much you should use. But the problem with an e-bike is it's a lot heavier than a mountain bike. So a lot of times those numbers are for a mountain bike and your e-bike is 40 or 50 pounds heavier. So you'll want to compensate for it. So I say this, the sag method is the best way. Just set it up to sag about that much and then see how you like it. And if you like a firmer ride, then just pump it up a little more, but there should be some sag. You don't want it to not move when you sit on the bike. And the shock is also gonna have a rebound adapter on it. So you can set how quickly the shock bounces back or doesn't bounce back. And on this one, you can turn it all the way to lock it out, which means it, the shock doesn't move at all. So if you wanna lock the shock so it doesn't move at all, you can set it that way. And then you can set it all points in between as well. Now on a dual chamber shock, this one has a chamber on the top that you add air to that controls the pushing force, pushing down towards the wheel. That's the compression. So when it goes up a bump, that chamber is what gets compressed. And then there's also another air valve down here that controls your rebound. So when it's bouncing back this way, the air you put in there will make it bounce more or less back. And you just wanna adjust the two chambers, uh, keeping in mind your sag, to where you have the most comfortable ride. And that's really a, a matter of individual preference. So you really have to play around with it. I like barely any air in the rebound. Here's a visualization of what that means. So the red is the rebound and the green is the compression. And then a good shock pump is gonna have a bleeder valve in it. So let's say we wanna just really fine tune it. You can just use that valve to let air out to get it to exactly where you want it. And then if you screw up, you just pump some more air into it and then you get it right where you want it again. And that's really all there is to it. But I recommend if you have a regular spring on an e-bike, it's worth it to put an air shock on it. And it's definitely worth it to learn how it works and then experiment around, try higher pressure, lower pressure, go over some potholes, go over some speed bumps and just figure out what works for you. So thanks for watching, comment, like, subscribe.